Temple Livingstone this morning. So glad to have you here with us. As we're a very exciting day. Get to dedicate and install the teachers as well as prepare for the dedication of the new school building. Uh, just an exciting time here at St. Paul's. There's no announcements today, so let's rise and begin with our opening song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, of your great mercy in Jesus Christ, you have granted us forgiveness of sin and all things pertaining to life and godliness. Send us your Holy Spirit, that he may so rule our hearts that we may serve you in holiness and pureness of living, and may give you the continual thanks for all your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 11. You shall therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, 
and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, talking of them when you are sitting in your house, and when you are walking by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give them, as long as the heavens are above the earth. This is the word of the Lord. We read Psalm 78 responsibly. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from the Lord. Things that we have heard and known. That our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children. But tell the coming generations. The glorious deeds of the Lord and his might. And the wonders that he has done. He established a testimony in Jacob. And appointed a law in Israel. Which he commanded our fathers. To teach to their children. That the next generation might know them. The children yet more. And arise and tell them to their children. So that they should set their hope in God. And not forget the works of God. But keep his commandments. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In January 2017, I preached a sermon about the challenges before St. Paul's Lutheran Church. And one of the challenges I listed was to tear down that nasty awning and build a new welcoming entrance to our school. Within a matter of hours, even days, the members of this church were bringing me a greater challenge. Let's build a new school. I was cool to that, thought it might be too much. But the momentum kept growing. Committees were formed. And so one day I sat in my office all alone and said to myself, well, big shot, senior pastor, after 18 years, you've lost all control. <laughs> one thing led to another. We were led to John Kieschnick to help us raise the funds. And he and I sat privately in my office and based on statistics in the past, we figured we could raise about $5 million. But we were going to give it our best shot. But one other thing was happening that we don't even know about back then, but now we do. God decided that St. Paul's Lutheran Church was going to build a new school. And that, my friends, is what made the difference. So today is not about us. It's not about how we've overcome the great barriers of money and torrential rains that made Lake St. Paul's and the coronavirus. It's about God. We will not hide from them, their children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders he has done, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and arise and tell them to their children so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. God's word is more than just Psalm 78 instructing us to do this. God's word is a powerful word. It never returns to him without accomplishing what he sent it to do. And he sent this word to work, to bring about that building. We rejoice this day that we have a God whose word is that powerful. And we rejoice this day that we have a God who decided to work through us to make it happen. And he did so in spite of all our worries and fears and our many, many doubts. How many of you actually believed we could raise $7.1 million? I didn't. But God worked, us, worked it in us and through us. He opened our hearts to hear his powerful word. So that today we not only have a new school, we have a new expanded early childhood center so they can continue to grow. Because God works wonders. He's always worked wonders. He brought his children out of Egypt 
over a million strong through a Red Sea divided to save them from bondage and slavery. He led them through the wilderness 40 years, gave them food and drink, and their ankles did not swell and their shoes did not wear out, as the scriptures say. He gave the promised land just as he promised Abraham. But he was just getting started. Just getting started. Wonder of wonders, he would save us all from all our sin in a most unlikely way, nailing his son to a cross. And by his shed blood, our sins were atoned for and covered. And then wonder of wonders, Jesus Christ rose on the third day from death itself. God saved us from his wrath and condemnation for all we had done by pouring it all out on his son nailed to a cross. He saved us, rescued us from sin, Satan, death, and hell. And this is what our children and yet unborn children need to hear. In a world of violence, hatred, division, racism, disease, death, they need to hear of the power of God because we only find comfort in the power of God the power of God that saved us, the power of God that always keeps his promises, the power of God is what gives us comfort, our children comfort, and we can know that we are safely in his hand. Lou Holtz, the famous coach of Notre Dame, said, you cannot take your money with you to heaven, but you can take your children. Teach them, pray for them, bring them up believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, telling the next generation, and after that, and after that, as long as this world stands. That is the most important thing your children can ever hear in this world. They need to hear the promises of God and the comfort he offers. I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. You see, today is just not about us. Today is about our faithful God, who always keeps his promises and always will keep his promises whose powerful word is always there for us, who reached down from heaven and saved us from sin and death. He works wonders. And someday when your children or grandchildren ask you, have you ever seen God work wonders, you just point to that building 
and say, God worked wonders through us. Wonders through us and for us. He works wonders to tell the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders he has done. To God be the glory. Amen. faculty members being installed to please come forward and our existing faculty members to stand and stay in your places where you are seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you are either being installed or continuing your service in St. Paul's Lutheran School, Early Childhood Center, or Parents' Day Out program. Hear the word of God concerning your service. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Matthew chapter 20, verses 25 to 28. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Colossians 3, verses 15 through 17. 
Do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Yes, I believe and confess the canonical scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian creeds, as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures, and do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, because they are in accord with the Word of God. I also reject all the errors they condemn. Do you confess the unaltered Augsburg Confession to be a true exposition of Holy Scripture and a correct exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? And do you confess that the apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Mark Luther, the small cold articles, the treatise on the power and primacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord, as these are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith? Yes, I need to confess my own, because they are in accord with the Word of God. You solemnly promise faithfully to serve God's people in the teaching ministry in accordance with Holy Scripture and with these confessions? Will you, trusting in God's care, seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn the gospel of Jesus Christ with a godly life? I will, with the help of God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you have heard the confession and solemn promise of these servants. Will you show them fitting love and honor and support them with your gifts and prayers? If so, then answer, we will, with the help of God. We will, with the help of God. The Almighty and most merciful God strengthen and assist you always. Amen. We now invite our existing teachers to be seated. Brianne, Dana, and Emma, are you ready and willing to assume the work of this office? Brianne Stoliker, I install you as teacher in St. Paul's Lutheran Elementary School in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dana Meyer, I install you as teacher in St. Paul's Lutheran Elementary School in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Emma Schranz, I install you as teacher in St. Paul's Early Childhood Center in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and most merciful Lord, we thank you for providing faithful men and women in your church to assist and support the office of the Holy Ministry and its work among us. Grant your Holy Spirit to Brianne, Dana, and Emma, and adorn them with wisdom and power from on high. Incline both young and old to godliness and obedience, and let them so benefit by instruction in your Holy Word, that they may serve you all, the, all their days and finally obtain eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Go in peace and joy. The Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and bless and strengthen you for faithful service in his name.
We confess the Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It is good and right that we should make confession of our sins. The section on confession in the small catechism informs and directs us with these words, which summarizes it well. Confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins, and second, that we receive absolution. That is, forgiveness from the pastor, as from God himself. Not doubting, but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. Humble yourself then before God, confess your sins to him, and implore his forgiveness. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. By nature, I am a sinful creature. By thought, word, and deed, I have continually transgressed your law. For the sake of the sufferings and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a penitent and contrite being. Forgive me all my sins, and grant me the power of your Holy Spirit, that I may amend my sinful life. God, be gracious to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. As you believe, so let it be. As a called or named servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In addition to the prayer requests listed in the bulletin, we also pray for one Akempi who is hospitalized. Each petition ends with the words, let us pray to the Lord, to which the congregation responds, Lord have mercy. For the new school building that we dedicate this weekend, thanking you, the giver of every good and perfect gift, for this wonderful blessing. May it serve as a facility in which generations of children will hear of the wonders you have done, especially through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For our school faculty, especially those being installed this weekend, for our school staff, and for the students of our school, and for all who teach and all who learn in schools across this nation as we begin another academic year, that all who teach, learn, or serve in other ways might be successful and prosper and might be kept safe in both body and spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. For the healing of those facing physical challenges, especially Bob Niedringhaus, Vivian Meyer, and Wanda Kempe, that they might experience healing and restoration of health according to your will and strength and peace according to your promise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who mourn, especially all who mourn the death of Elaine Ketchelmeyer, that they might be granted comfort and peace through all the promises in God's word for those who live and die in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our good use of the fruits of our labors, sharing generously for the good of our neighbor, as through support for Lutheran Development Group, our mission of the month, and for the tithes and offerings that accompany our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all married couples, especially Brent and Julie Showy, as they celebrate 25 years of marriage, that they might continue to grow in their love and devotion for one another and for you with every joy and sorrow shared. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, giver of all that is good, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your grace, that we may be found worthy when our Savior comes to bring to completion all things. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, the psalmist declares that the learning of God's word is to his praise, saying, I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your just and righteous decrees. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. Since the Lord has taught us in his holy word that all things are holy when sanctified by the word of God in prayer, it is fitting that we bless and sanctify this school, that it may be a place where children may grow in the knowledge and wisdom of the only true and saving God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, since you have committed the care and nurture of children to your people, graciously enlighten those who teach and learn at this school, that they may know the truth and trust in you all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let the doors of this school be opened in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.